Hello and welcome to another video. We're going to do a investigation or just slightly explore the differences in limiting volume of a non-master volume amp like this. It's basically a Marshall 50 watt plexi clone. Uh, it's hand wired so putting the master volume in was relatively easy. There's a few helpful videos on YouTube. I'll link those below that made it quite simple to install. It didn't require purchasing any hard to obtain parts. One thing that you will see mentioned fairly frequently on forums and whatnot is that the quality of the pot you use for the master volume, because it's a dual gang pot, as you rotate the pot, you're altering the resistance of two pots at once. So you want the tapers to be quite close because of the way that it's connected to the amp circuit itself it has to be sh presenting the same resistance to two points at the same time but i didn't pay for a expensive military spec pot i forget the manufacturer that a lot of people recommend i'm sure they're great i just used a run of the mill i'm pretty sure the brand is burns not alpha of the one i used but either way when i measured it uh, upon receiving it it wasn't exact, so I think it was 250k and it was about 252 and then 260 on the other side. So they weren't the exact same. I kind of measured it at a few points along the sweep. In any case, uh, it sounds great. Um, we'll, we'll get into that. We'll record some clips. Basically, I want to find out, is it worth owning? The Waza attenuator, great as it is, uh, I'm not playing gigs or anything like that at the moment. It doesn't have a whole lot of use for me other than just being an excellent master volume, a glorified master volume. I'm happy to just use a computer for the impulse response loading and things like that. The reverb on it's good, but again, you can, you know, you can use the computer to do that. I'd rather not have money tied up in equipment where it, it could be better spent on other equipment essentially. So that's what we're going to mainly investigate in this. We'll have the amp cranked and the master volume at the back all the way down with the same volume in the room from the uh, reamp in the Waza attenuator. And then we'll also try having the master volume way up, front settings of the amp the same, and we will limit the volume more with the attenuator or reamp at less. Because the cheaper alternative is to use a load box like the two notes captor, which I'm a pretty big fan of. Obviously the difference with that, it doesn't have built-in effects, but you can use the master volume of the amp to limit the volume and then just tap off a line out running through the captor, no attenuation, and then do all your effects from the computer. So your reverb delays and things like that. Some people don't like that. They want to keep everything kind of at the amp. For me personally, I prefer to keep this dry. So you just get your distorted sound from there and then use the computer that has the power to do all the digital effects and things like that. That way you can still have reverb and delay after the amp, so to speak, but then they're just not going to be coming through the speakers in the cabinet. They're going to be, you know, you can track those separately and then alter the mix later as well. So in some respects, it is a better option. One thing that I think we'll notice in the clips is that when we have it set up with the amp master volume down and the Waza volume up, is kind of a tighter tone. Whereas if we crank the amp post phase inverter master volume and we limit the volume more with the Waza, it's, it's kind of a fatter, looser tone, maybe because the transformer and parts later in the circuit are clipping a little bit more in that configuration.